What I think is really intriguing is that in qualitative research courses, people start talking about mixing methods pretty soon, or maybe just like we do in the final week. Whereas in quality, quantitative research courses, people don't start talking about that. Why is that? Is it because of an inferiority complex? It might be, because there are some weaknesses, obviously, to qualitative research, as there are weaknesses in quantitative research. And maybe qualitative researchers feel these weaknesses more strongly. So they feel that there is an issue with generalizability. When you do a qualitative research, usually you cannot generalize to a population. You can generalize to theory, but not so often to a population. So that's a weakness. Another weakness might be subjectivity in its methods. When you observe, you observe as a single researcher. Who's checking you? Uh, is this intersubjective? Is it objective? Probably not. So there's an issue with subjectivity. There's also an issue with replication because you do the observations and you uh, do a certain ethnography. I cannot easily copy it. Not in practice. Maybe in theory I can, but in practice it can't because I wasn't there at the same time in the same interaction as you were. So there is an issue with replication. And there can be an issue of lack of transparency because what you write, it might not be the complete story. So what I write might not be the complete story for you. So there can be a lack of transparency. And maybe because of these weaknesses of qualitative research, qualitative researchers tend to get the calculator. And using a the calculator, they try to say something about the wider population. They try to take some more standardized steps. So there's less, trans less lack of transparency. There's a less an issue with re replicability. There's less an issue with subjectivity. So maybe we are focusing on mixed methods because of inferiority. So this is one view on uh, mixing methods. The view that qualitative research is maybe a little inferior. So we need something more superior to it, more quantitative research. And some, some researchers, some authors would say, people start doing mixed methods out of a, a feeling of inferiority or out of a feeling of superiority. And therefore, maybe we shouldn't do it or maybe we should. There are also other views on, on why we should or should not mix methods. And some people are really against all mixing. They say, well, when you start mixing methods, you start mixing things up. It will become a, a general mess. There are other people who would say, well, mixing methods can be pretty useful and they give reasons for that. And there are people that say, well, the distinction between quant quantitative and qualitative is false anyway. So how can we start talking about mixing methods? So we discussed this first one. This second view is all about incompatibility because, because of two arguments. The first argument is that the methods are embedded within a philosophical background. That's argument one. Argument two is that these different methods, these different strands of um, uh, philosophy of science, cannot really communicate to each other. They're paradigms and these paradigms exist and they can't talk to each other. So how does it look like? Well, for instance, for quantitative research, we have the background in realism and positivism or objectivism and, and positivism. And the strong focus is on measurement. We want to measure in quantitative research and therefore we do, we use quantitative methods. So we have a view on reality that is realist. We have a view on knowledge that is positivist. We need measurement and therefore we use quantitative methods. For qualitative research, we have a view on social reality as construction, so more constructionist. We can only understand social reality by interpreting it. So we focus on meaning. And if you focus on meaning, you have to use qualitative methods. And 
So if you say this, you say, well, there's a realism strand and there's a constructionism, interpretivism strand and the methods are embedded within the philosophy of science. Well, if you add a second argument, you would say that these cannot talk to each other. There's the issue of incommensurability. There are two paradigms and these paradigms can't really talk to each other. If you say that there's a reality out there, you can't say the reality is socially constructed. If you say it's all about measurement, you can't say it's all about meaning. So you can't mix those methods. At least that's what the people say that are against all mixing. And these issues were used during the paradigm wars. In the 80s, 70s, and maybe early 90s, the paradigm wars went on. People were either in this school or in that school, or at least that's what the history of science says. There are other people that say, well, what we should do is mix, but mix sensibly. We can mix in different ways using uh, different logic. For instance, the logic of triangulation. We can do a survey, but in surveys there are certain issues. So maybe we can repair those issues, those issues and errors with validity. We can uh, repair them by using more qualitative interviews or maybe qualitative observations. So what we do in triangulation, according to Martin Hammersley, is we deal with the errors by the other strand of research, by the quantitative or the qualitative strand. So that's triangulation and that, that can be useful. A second way in which mixing methods can be useful is by facilitation. Already in the 1940s, Lasersfeld spoke about doing, that you have to do a qualitative interview before starting to develop even your quantitative surveys. So you have to do a qualitative research in order to develop your quantitative research. But there's another way of facilitation and that's the opposite. You have to do a survey first before going in depth with some people that you sample from this survey. So that's called facilitation. And the third reason mixing methods can be useful is by complementarity. Different methods answer different research questions. So maybe these questions are related. So by mixing methods you can relate different questions to each other. The fourth view on mixing method is that the distinction between quantitative and qualitative is false anyway. Why are we talking about quantitative methods and qualitative methods, whereas if we look at the different dimensions of these differences, they're not so big. Quantitative methods is not always deductive. It can be pretty inductive. Look at factor analysis. Whereas qualitative analysis can also be pretty deductive. So induction or deduction is not really the difference. Focus on meaning, focus on behavior. Both are focusing on meaning. Both are focusing on behavior. So why bloody something are we splitting them up? and then reifying them by saying, oh, look, we're going to do mixed methods. We're mixing two totally different colors and then we get something new. Simmons and, and Gora say it's nonsense. Mixed methods is death and it shouldn't have been born anyway because it's based on a false distinction. So these are different views on mixed methods. In the next lecture, I will show you something about how to do mixed methods, if you still want to do it.